If you've ever spent some time diving through the menus of a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you've probably noticed a setting that allows you to shoot in RAW. But what does RAW mean? Well, in this video I'm going to be discussing what RAW is, why you might want to use it, and why you might not want to use it. Now during this video, I'm going to be mainly talking about RAW in the context of photography, but just about everything I'm about to say applies to both RAW photos and RAW video. I'll be sure to note at the end where there are differences. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about RAW and how it changes our image processing pipeline. When your camera sensor captures an image, the data it records is basically just a bunch of numbers that tell you how much light hit each pixel during the exposure. In order to turn this data into a viewable RGB image, we have to process it first. During the processing of the sensor data, our camera will use several different settings to inform the decisions it makes. Settings like white balance, gamma curve, color space, and others all influence the way the raw data is processed into an image. Once the processing is complete, the image is compressed and then saved into a file. But what's important to understand is that this process is not reversible. You can't take an image file and revert it back into the raw sensor data. That information is simply lost. So whatever settings you apply in camera, you're stuck with. Raw, however, changes this. When you shoot in raw, you intercept the sensor data before it undergoes the camera's processing, and you save the raw data to a file. This file isn't really an image per se, it's just a bunch of sensor data that can be processed into an image using the right software. Basically, we're choosing not to process our images on the day of shooting, and instead opting to process them later in post. And by saving our raw data, we're able to bring it into editing software and reprocess it as many times as we need to. RAW is often referred to as a digital negative because it has some similarities to how film negatives work. You have to develop it for it to be viewable, but as long as you keep the original negative around, there's nothing stopping you from redeveloping it later using a different process. Now, the exact settings you're able to change in post vary depending on the exact RAW implementation you're using, but some common ones are white balance, gamma curve, color space, and lens correction sometimes ISO, but notably not aperture or shutter speed, since those affect the image before it hits the sensor, so they can't be changed in post even using RAW. But let's look at an example. To demonstrate the benefits of shooting RAW, let's see what happens when we deliberately mess up our white balance on the day of shooting. So to start, let me take a photo with the correct white balance to use as a control. Now I'm going to deliberately set my white balance way off and try to correct it in post. As you can see, while I can bring the image closer to the correct white balance, it doesn't look as good as our control that had the right white balance in the first place. This is because correcting the white balance in post like this is a destructive process. Shooting with the wrong settings and then fixing it later will always result in a worse looking image than getting the balance right in camera. In order to fix it without any drop in quality, we need the raw sensor data. But since we're working with a JPEG, there's no way to recover that lost information. Now let's look at what happens when I use a raw workflow instead. Once again, I'm going to deliberately mess up my white balance in camera. Next, I bring my raw file into an editing program and I'm presented with different settings that I can manipulate. Remember, the raw file isn't really an image yet. I need to tell the program how it should process the raw file and turn it into an image. Most of these default settings are okay, but I'm going to adjust the temperature slider to bring my white balance back to where it should be. And you'll notice that when I correct the white balance on the raw file, it looks just as good as our control. Changing any of these raw settings is a non-destructive process. Because the raw file doesn't have any settings applied yet, any options I choose in this menu are equally valid. Any of the settings I choose in camera are basically just suggestions. They might come up as the default, 
but we aren't bound to them. I'm totally free to ignore the settings that were chosen in camera and process the image however I want to, without any drop in quality. So should you use RAW? Well, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of using a RAW workflow. The main advantage of using RAW is increased flexibility in posts. If you like to color grade the things that you shoot, you'll probably see a pretty significant benefit from using RAW. In addition to the ability to change settings in post, RAW formats typically also have increased bit depth and reduced compression for even better flexibility. But RAW also comes with some downsides to be aware of. For one thing, the files are often quite a bit bigger. Because RAW files typically aren't compressed much, if at all, they'll take up quite a bit more space. Also, you're basically requiring yourself to edit your images before you can send them anywhere. If you try to upload a RAW file to social media, it isn't going to work. You have to process it using compatible software before you can send it anywhere. This is why many cameras offer the ability to shoot both a RAW file and a JPEG at the same time. Now that's all well and good for photography, but what about RAW video? Well, RAW video is very much a thing, and it works in largely the same way as RAW photos, but if you delve into the menus of your DSLR or camcorder, you probably won't find it. And the reason is that RAW video requires a lot more processing power than normal video does, which already requires more processing power than still photos. So, RAW video is typically only available in high-end cinema cameras that are built to handle it. You'll see RAW video used most commonly on big-budget Hollywood movies and shows that have the budget to handle the more expensive equipment and larger files. The biggest difference between RAW photos and RAW video is how they're encoded. The simplest form of RAW video is just a folder filled with a bunch of RAW photos, but thankfully the industry has developed some video codecs that can much more efficiently store RAW video. Some RAW implementations are uncompressed, like Airy RAW and Cinema DNG RAW, while others compress the image without losing the ability to make corrections in post. Redcode RAW, Cinema RAW Lite, Blackmagic RAW, and ProRes RAW all have slightly different implementations of compressed RAW. Some cameras are able to capture RAW internally, while others can output a RAW signal over HDMI or SDI, but require an external recorder to actually capture it. So that's a basic explanation of what RAW is and why you might or might not want to use it for your next project. Anyway, my name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.